Father, we thank you for the privilege and the opportunity this morning first to gather in freedom together. Father, we thank you for the many blessings that you've bestowed upon this nation, upon this program, blessings that you've given to us and our families. Father, for a moment this morning we pray and turn our thoughts to those who suffer, those who are in need, Father, of your healing, your comfort, peace, and power of your Holy Spirit. Father, as we leave here today, we pray that you guide and direct us in the decisions that we make, especially those that affect so many people in the leadership roles that you have placed us in in our communities. Father, most of all, as we leave here and as we gather, even in this moment, we pray that this time together we we'll honor you and it would be pleasing in your sight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Louisiana, Jasper Williams. This indeed is a bittersweet moment, bitter in the fact that I have to leave something that I've thoroughly loved, but sweet in that I'll be able to spend a lot more time with my wife, my daughter, son-in-law, and my beautiful granddaughter. I want to thank my local co-op, South Louisiana Electric, located 50 miles southwest of here, and the board of directors gave me the green light to run for the NRCA board back in 1999. And all the employees and staff at that co-op who made it possible for me to be gone because they took over and did the job. I want to thank the Association of Louisiana Electric Cooperatives for all of their support during this time. Randy Pierce and all of those directors. I want to thank all of you members out there who have made my last, all of my time on the NRC board, but especially the last two years, so very special. We do it for the people that are back home. We do it for the folks who are working, trying to make a living in this country, and to try to give them a better quality of life. But if we listen to them, I think they'll tell us how to do that. And I think they can give us the roadmap to get to that better quality of life. And I thought I was pretty cocky two years ago when I stood where Curtis is standing. I thought I knew what it would be like to be president because Wally and I work very closely together. You have no idea, Curtis, what you're getting into. <laughs> but I want to take this opportunity to ask my wife, Candy, to stand. I was a Bayou boy, spoke mostly French, and then I run into this city girl, 
And I remember the first day I brought her to my house. My dad was digging potatoes. And I told her, I said, you're going to have to put some overalls on and dig potatoes. And she kind of looked at me sideways. And I said, my dad doesn't say a whole lot, but he always told me never to marry a girl with long fingernails. <laughs> so you're going to have to prove yourself. And she put those overalls on and went out in the field and dug potatoes alongside my dad. My dad was not a man of many words. But he came to me and he kind of popped me on the side of the head like he used to do in an affectionate way. And he said, Chien, He said, you did good, boy. And so she was in. That was 46 years ago. And I've loved her every minute and will forever. I would like to say all of you, merci beaucoup et au revoir. Thank you, Curtis. Wow. I'm really excited, you all. I cannot thank you enough for giving me the opportunity work with such a fabulous family. Co-op Nation, there's no better. So you all, I am from Cape Girardeau, Missouri. It's a town of about, the, yeah, clap please, yay Kate. It's a town of about 35,000 people on the banks of the mighty Mississippi River that Mike Guidry so eloquently, eloquently described yesterday. And we have had our fair share our fair share of disasters. We've had floods, we've had tornadoes, we have had ice storms, and we even had a derecho. And I didn't even know what that was until a couple of years ago. But during the 16 plus years that I have been privileged to serve uh, Southern Missouri and the United States Congress, I have seen up close and personal, up close and personal, how Co-op Nation and each and every one of you could be counted on in times of disaster. And that makes me so proud. And you should be so proud too because that is what makes the difference between Co-ops and everybody else. You know, I have been so inspired. I was so inspired during the ice storms, during the flooding, you name it, but during the ice storms particularly, when our linemen in southern Missouri were out there in the harshest of circumstances. It looked like a nuclear war had happened. Thousands of poles lost. They were out there in two degree weather, three degree weather, trying to bring the lights back on. And that was so inspiring. I have been so inspired too by the CEOs that I've met who oftentimes face kind of challenging circumstances that are way beyond anyone's control. And I've been inspired by our board of directors and, and the board of directors of local co-ops because they give you all give so much of your personal time to Co-op Nation. And I know it's not easy for your families, but you're making a difference in the lives of people. You're lifting people up in your communities. You're making them feel good. And we do face some challenges, y'all. We face uh, challenges from folks who have a different agenda, we face challenges uh, because people don't understand all that we do to make lives better for people in our communities. We face challenges that will require creativity, ingenuity, a common purpose. But guess what? If we stick together, 
if we work hard, if we remember that we are family, we can beat anybody. Even if we have differences, we need to talk about them. We need to air them. We need to work them out, just like people do in a family. Because I can promise you that together we are one, together we can beat anyone, and together we will beat anyone as long as we remember that common purpose. And so I want you all to know how very blessed I am, how very privileged, privileged I feel to have been given this opportunity to lead such an incredible organization, such wonderful people. It is a true blessing for me. And I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Gotta be very respectful.